Hello, hello and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Am I getting a picture on the screen? Um, yes, we are. We are live. It seems to be blinking a, a little bit. Um, I think the new um, the new live, live stream uh, thing on YouTube, I've got to get used to it. So you'll have to bear with me for, for these uh, ropey starts on these uh, on these streams uh, of the past few. Um, I'm just getting used to this new uh, live stream creator studio thing. Right, so uh, as usual, this stream is brought to you by AMB Animation and the Real Animator Training Library. Visit ambanimation.com uh, and join the best animation learning resource in the world. Right, so what are we going to be doing today? Um, we are going to be continuing with the series that uh, I started um, on, uh, on, I think it was last week now, I think I did it on Sunday, uh, where we were designing a, a short film and we began with designing, uh, doing some drawings of this uh, Little Red Riding Hood uh, character. Of course, uh, that isn't just doing one character, <laughs> it's not really making a short film. Um, so uh, we have got to do uh, more on that. So we're going to now do something uh, else, uh, which is obviously we're going to be designing the Big Bad Wolf, uh, because this has all been inspired by, um, uh, I'm going to go to the uh, Real Animator Training Growth Development and Progress Group. This still was originally inspired by, and she's uh, actually updating her posts, which I'm super, super happy. Um, Amberly was originally doing this for college, but I think she's kind of getting fed up with college. Um, so she originally posted this animatic that they had assigned her. And I said, that's a really good idea. Let's, let's, uh, let me kind of show how I would make a, a little Red Riding Hood kind of thing. And, um, and join in uh, with that. And I decided to um, not just specifically help Am Amberly, but make a broad uh, instructional, small kind of YouTube series where um, I go through the process. Obviously, uh, we've skimmed over a lot of stuff in this first lecture. We, we uh, I mean, I had to just use the fact that I could draw as a, as a given and, uh, and, and construction and all those things out and just talking about the essential things of the character design process and that's you know that's what this is this isn't actually a course what we're doing um on this thing this is actually a uh a youtube series it's it's, it's something that's going to be um for everyone um uh so what amberly has posted here actually today is her update and it's it's you know i was planning to do this big bad wolf lecture anyway but she's decided to post an update of her uh, designs of the wolf um, which is really good so um, obviously I'm not going to tell you to change your design Amberly you go with the flow you could do with what you're doing you've got a certain look to your film um, don't let my drawing style influence you but uh, hopefully I can I can suggest some little ideas she's got a cool idea where she said and that's what I'm going to kind of get on today she says um, I think she suggested here he used to be human but got cursed to become a wolf and that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about um I'm going to talk about designing characters, animal characters, but obviously just like um so we're going to design the wolf today. But obviously just like you know Mufasa in the Lion King, he's the first one that springs to mind uh where his mouth looked like James Earl Jones. And I remember James Earl Jones saying, they used my mouth and, and you know, in, in the making of and all that. Uh, and they were studying my mouth. Uh, I can't really do his voice, but um, uh, who can, who can? <laughs> but uh, but uh, so, you know, and you often see the character looking like, like Sir Peter Euston off in, in Robin Hood uh, and um, Derry Thomas as the snake. You see elements of these characters uh, in in the um, in the design now obviously I'm just going to do this in one sitting in about 
two hours, three hours, maybe, you know, maybe even less. I don't know, however long it takes. So I'm not going to produce something. I'm, I'm not going to just like this. This, this is a, it's a nice drawing and everything, but it's, it's a pretty typical stuff. So I'm just going to do, just produce something nice and typical. Uh, but obviously, if you're doing this, you're going to want to put a lot more thought uh, and time into into it than than what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here might look very professional and very amazing, but I'm just going to have to roll with whatever comes into my mind and whatever works to make the stream uh, nice. Because uh, I don't want to spend too long on these on these uh, lectures. Uh, as I said, it's 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 not a course, but hopefully it's still going to give you a lot of information. You're still I'm still trying to give a, a lot of good uh free information uh that people can also get, uh hopefully get entertained from as well um right so before we begin with the lecture i'm just going to go and look on the chat uh we got 12 people online so just a few hellos to get through and then we'll begin drawing uh life fantasy i knew you'd be, you're going to enjoy this stream uh, she loves animals sean pascatuni good to see you Sean is a very strong draftsman, so it'll, I'm sure he'll enjoy today's stream as well. Vietnam flashback. Uh, the B Crayon, how are you doing? Leonardo, Leonardo Romero, how, sup, how are you doing? Akal the Warrior, uh, how is he doing? And Google demonetization. And Alessandi Rojas, nice to see you. Okay, so that's all our hellos down. Good to have you all online. Uh, I think today we're going to have a, a really enjoyable uh, stream here. Now, what I did do beforehand, because I had to prep myself, is I very quickly uh, had to have a little think. Um, let me get my storyboard pro. I had to have a little think um, about... Uh, what I was going to do and I thought okay well we established that there was an Italian connection with this um, with uh, today with, with this story and we established um, that it's 10th century or whatever so I just said um, I said basically uh, for about um, uh, you know about five minutes before the stream before I set up I said I want to base it on an actor and I just thought of the first kind of um, uh, suave kind of Italian sort of actor I could think of was Al Pacino, you know. So I just thought of Al Pacino. So I just Googled Al Pacino's face from Scarface um, because I just Googled Al Pacino from Scarface. And I just very quickly um, uh, doodled a really rough uh, impression. I can't bring the Al Pacino face on to uh, that, that I made the doodle of. But the first thing that I scribbled was this. It's not very good. It's just something that I just made note of the shapes of his face. Uh, I'm not making a caricature of Al Pacino or anything like that. Uh, that's not the point of this thing. Uh, the point of it was just to quickly just roll with it. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to going to make a quick sketch of that face to show you what I looked for when I did it. And and then how I'm going to try and inter interpret it into the um, into the wolf, because that's where we got to take it from there. So I'm going to look at the real Al Pacino again and maybe give it another shot to see to see if I can get anything different. So the thing we notice about him is he's, he's got these big uh, uh, wide. I'm, I'm giving him this kind of uh, strong, high cheekbones. Uh, again, um, this is not. I'm not really working at making a caricature. I'm just trying to pick out, for me, you know, shapes that I can I, I can use, shapes that I can think about when I'm um, when I'm making my design. Now, excuse me. His eyebrows are, they're not particularly evil. He's got an unsettling uh, quality to him. It's kind of relaxed quality to his face um so he's got this kind of lazy look to him and he's got a very high nose bridge and this long kind of nose that comes down which is i i think you know i didn't i didn't i think it's just a happy accident i didn't think um too much about it i just thought who's a kind of uh 
deceptive kind of actor that would make a good um, uh, wolf, you know. Um, and I just thought of Al Pacino, um, and obviously he's got this scar on this on this on this particular role. And I went for the the younger Al Pacino as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the older one, because I figured that you know um, we don't want the wolf to be old. I don't I, I wouldn't necessarily want him to be old. I think there has to be some kind of quality about him that um that attracts the uh obviously she's too young to have any kind of attraction to the character um in 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 a in a in a in a sort of crush or a romantic way but just something appealing and pleasant about about him that that can you know possibly lead the girl astray a little bit you know uh so we want to think about something things like that so i'm just making quick studies of his face he's got this round uh basket kind of hair coming here like that and let's just make it a little bit smaller i'm gonna really refine them i'm just moving quickly i'm literally moving as quickly as i i did uh beforehand to make the uh study of the before i came online because i just want to get this stream moving okay so those are my my that's my initial feeling okay it's not too different to what i had before i thought i'd give it another shot so what I'm picking out here is, is he's got um, um, he's got a big square kind of eyes and I'm just keeping them I'm working in a very graphic shape as I said I'm not planning on keeping this drawing uh it's not important to me you're going to see what I'm going to do with it in a minute I'm just picking out features that I think I can uh I can work with okay so he's got this uh he's got these kind of sympathetic it's really weird that they're, they're not they're kind of lazy eyes you know that are that are like this and let's just have that come in there and now he's got this lip he's got this really thin upper lip and this kind of solid bottom lip there like that so we've got something like that going on then we got this really high cheekbones. Now this really, this really helps me for if I want to make a wolf. It really does. It, it really, really helps me kind of want to get that that whole wolf thing because um, wolves. Because I'm going to have to look at a wolf next. Okay, uh, but I've got a kind of. I, again, I'm not going to, as I said, this is not a course. I'm going to have to move fairly fast. You're going to have to look at a real wolf, okay? Um, you're going to have to look at a real wolf. I've kind of got experience drawing and designing canines and things like that from my uh, years in the 20 odd years in the animation business. So um, I'm just going to kind of roll with, uh, with my prior knowledge. Uh, so this is just giving you guys an insight. So let me now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to, I need to see these shapes clearly. So I don't want to get carried away with the hair design of the character. So I'm just going to just whack that in and let's fill all that up clearly so we can see these graphic shapes. Okay. So I'm making out this shape. So we haven't got a, a typically caricatured evil looking man. It's not a particularly fantastic um, recreation of the actor, but it's enough for me. It's enough to get me started. As I said, I'm not going to sit here and get too fiddly. Um, we just want to get uh, moving with it. And I'm just going to close this off because I just want to see if it's graphic enough, if I have captured uh, the graphic qualities there we go right so I have got this um, interpretation of mr. oopsie we pressed shift but it didn't listen let's just bring it a little bit smaller so there's a very quick um, uh, representation of what I make out of this photograph that I find on Google search um, of the Al Pacino okay 
uh, face. So he's got these wide cheekbones and um, and all that jazz. Now, if you look at wolves, okay, I'm not going to do a Google search because I'm, I've got to move quick, kind of like the way I know how to draw a little girl. I know how to draw a dog and a wolf, okay? But if, if you look at wolves, you'll see, okay, they have this kind of shape to them, which really, and this wasn't intentional, um, which really kind of helps, you know, really kind of helps helps me out um, in terms of what I want to do with the uh, with the with the wolf character for the Al Pacino thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just to try and keep some of this because now here's where here's where we're gonna really kind of like this is where we're gonna get a little bit crazy okay so why is my storyboard pro doing that let's bring that in just a little bit okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to let me just put a thing here like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this image of al pacino hair okay and i'm going to keep these eyes okay and now I'm going to play a little bit. So I'm going to bring that nose out. Okay. But I'm going to try and keep that nose shape as what it is. So this, this is not animation. This is just a little trick that I do when I'm designing characters fast. Okay. Where I want to base them on people. And again, I'm just, I mean, how many minutes has this live stream been going for? This live stream has been going for 16 minutes, okay? And I probably talked for about five minutes at the start. So I probably just, you know, spent only about five, ten minutes on this, on, which is not really enough if you want to do it properly, if you really want to capture the essence of the actor. Okay, I made a little sketch beforehand, but that's about it, okay? So now I'm going to now keep this mouth element here, and I'm going to bring this nose in here like this, okay? And I'm going to add this hair just just to just to do that. Now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to obviously we got these high cheekbones hair like this. So I'm going to bring those in. OK, and and do something like this. And it's it's this is just graphic. I'm not going to keep this, but I'm really making sure that I'm going to have something of the Pacino in this thing. So remember the skull of the of the wolf, okay, would be something like this. Okay, so you'll have the snout here. Okay, and it's a canine. Canines would be here like this. And then you'd have the um the mandible hair like this. Okay? So the skull would be something like this. Okay, so again, notice how I'm kind of doing all this heading to the top mouth of this portion here like this. So there's a little bit of information there for you. The, the, this would come at the bottom here. So these are the, the so you see this going on here like this. This is what I'm I'm bringing all that together with the, you know, with with the thing going on here. So I'm just very graphic. Okay. Now we've got this hairstyle here. I'm not going to keep the hairstyle. I might round the top of his head, okay, and keep this bit. But I'm not going to try and I'm not going to try and make him look exactly like Al Pacino. That's not the the thing here. But I want to have some kind of essence. Now I'm just going to throw in these ears on top, okay, and bring something out the sides like that okay so we're getting something like this okay i'm getting something like this and now i'm going to go and get my heavy pen and see see what we're, we're going to do here so now i'm going to maybe think about bushing this i'll tell you what i'll do that in another pass because if i stick too much to this drawing it's going to look too much like the the original 
quick Al Pacino sketch and this is not necessarily the way that I want to go because I want to unify the styles okay this is too, this is very square and very graphic but I'm keeping it graphic and square because I want it to um, to sit with um, everything that we've kind of talked about okay so we've got this here What was that? Uh, my one of my favorite films that he was in was *Scent of a Woman*. Uh, Hoo ah! <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I haven't thought too much about how this wolf would talk or act, or I just immediately thought, let's keep him in the. Now it looks like a fantastic Mr. Fox. <laughs> so you know. So obviously this has got to change. So now I'm going to put another one on here, on there like that. Okay, and I'm going to think about you know moving away from this okay uh, so I'm gonna turn off the light box but I'm gonna remember that we had these kind of shape eyes okay we had these kind of shape eyes right so I'm gonna remember this this is what I'm gonna remember about this but then I'm gonna think about um, I'm gonna think about the head shape now and I'm gonna think about I'm going to want to make this, I'm going to want to bring this up a bit. I'm going to want to bring that snout forward a bit. Let's jut that out just a bit. So we're, I don't care if, if I move away to, uh, from the Pacino thing. The point is, is um, as I said, I'm doing this quickly on a stream. And it's important to me to have something that works. Um, and to do this well, that's why feature animation takes a lot of time in pre-production. You can't sit down in a couple of hours, no matter how good you are, and produce a, f a, a really amazing feature film quality character. It's got to be debated. It's got to be decided and debated and, and all kinds of things about there. So I'm going to keep the scar on his eyebrow. And I'm just going to bush bush it out a little bit so i'm just going to do what what i know works for the sake of the stream and hopefully i've i've uh, enlightened a few people into ways that they can go about um adding some some uh characteristics of certain human humans so i'm trying to keep that lazy eye but i'm making him a little bit more menacing um keeping the characteristics of human characters in in the uh, in there let's give him a little bit of a, a beard thing coming in here like this and maybe this is gonna come around here like this looking a little older but I'm not gonna stick with this because I'm just doing this from the point of view of um, of the initial sketch okay so now I'm going to bring these things out, okay? I'm going to bring these things out to, to really identify that, that, um, that wolf-like quality to the character. So you can see how in this initial designing phase, I'm really thinking about shapes. I'm, I'm not thinking too much about making a nice drawing. I'm just scribbling, keeping it alive, uh, seeing what I can do within the shapes to make it really work okay so we want to think now I want to think about um, I want him to kind of have a, li a little bit of um, fur on him because if we look at this drawing he's he's kind of got got uh, got collars so I want him to feel like he's got uh, almost like a, a fur kind of collars around him to give him that although he's not going to be dressed I want him to feel like he's his his fur has that quality so i'm just sketching stuff in there to give me those kind of ideas so you can see how we've kind of um gone from this you know we've gone from this to this to this so this is where it's going at the moment okay um so that's where it's going at the moment but it's not something that um i'm uh I'm, I'm settling for at the moment it's just a quick thing to familiarize myself with the face okay so now um, what I'm gonna do before um, is I'm going to then think about one more thing 
I think for fun is I'm going to look I, I just saw this picture of Scarface sitting in a chair um, and um, I'm just gonna try and have a go uh, before I before I move on to try and flesh this character out I just think it'll be fun if I sit there and I you know and again if you really know the animal's anatomy then you can uh, then you can play uh, the you know the um, quadruped series that I do in the um, real animator training uh, library the animated quadruped series is actually really uh, gives you an understanding of the animal's anatomy even though you deal with a stick quadruped so it's it's actually a pretty good way to go um, but this uh, this thing because I haven't actually studied canine bones and muscles I've studied horse bones and muscles but um, I think it's enough for me okay so the pelvis is gonna be tilting this way so you'll see I'm, I'm just gonna have the character kind of sitting in the chair like Scarface I don't know I'm just gonna make a initial sketch and then after this initial kind of familiarization scribbling kind of sketch thing I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to then um, move on to actually start designing uh, the wolf in a more typical kind of standing pose like we did with this one here so this is another way to approach character design before I talked about silhouette in this lecture so this time I'm focusing more on getting the feel getting the flavor of the character's personality you know to make to, to give you some variation let's put the tail there because you've always got to think about silhouette and especially you know the timing couldn't be more perfect with <clears throat> what's going on with YouTube and being careful for children if we put the tail silhouette through there it's going to be very suggestive and when you're working on kids movies and things like that you have to be very very careful about even if it's innocent about how your silhouette can uh, depict certain suggestive things that can you know really get you into a lot of trouble if you're not careful okay right so these hands are gonna be coming here like this so I'm originally just seeing what I can come up with scribbling away here and now I'm gonna give it another go I'm gonna come in on top here and just try and get a feel let's try and get a feel for our kind of scar face wolf okay but I, I don't intend him to be in these kind of roles maybe he would be I, I, I see him being on all fours okay uh, so I'm gonna do him in a more uh, typical kind of all four uh, role in a uh, pose when I want to flesh create a more fleshed out drawing but at the moment as I said we're really kind of I'm really kind of playing here so I remember this shape mouth coming here like this and the nose I think I'm gonna sit the nose on top there like this so that's all going to sit in there okay then we have these side pieces so now I'm kind of working in these shapes okay each drawing I do I'm getting a little bit more comfortable okay this is the way okay so now I'm gonna rely on on my prior knowledge to just build this thing in uh, again you're gonna have to you know I think it's a given this is a, a, a course that where this isn't a course it's a YouTube free YouTube series that we're doing on making a small film hopefully it'll give you some ideas but uh, which is why I'm kind of skimming over a lot of things because there's just too much to talk about uh, for these kind of things but um, so I think it's a given you're gonna have to learn anatomy so the actually the his his shoulder blade you know even though I'm making him sit like a person let's try and cheat the shoulder uh, the scapula would be somewhat like this the humerus would be here and this would be here like this and then this would be here and then we'd have all this kind of on there so that was just for your benefit okay I'm gonna do this one on this arm I'm gonna just work myself okay I'm gonna have this coming here like this okay and then we're gonna have his, his little he's gonna have a little thumb we're gonna have proper paw anatomy going on here like this in okay, case so it's gonna be sitting on there again in here and uh, this maybe is gonna come here like this and again I haven't I'm just playing okay 
we're going to be moving on to doing a more proper wolf okay this is just the initial ideas where I really want to kind of get a feel for the kind of this is a great way okay so we want to think about this 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 is his knee coming here this is coming here and this is his other and then this foot we're gonna bring in here let's just one two three four like that all right yeah let's play with it a little bit Cur curve it whatever i think we'll give him a bit of fur coming higher like that yeah that's interesting and then the tail will sit on there like that let's just get rid of all that and let's just turn this yellow and and fulfill this arm as we it should have been from the start okay so i tried to throw in little suggestions of animal anatomy that you know just to kind of show you just how important all this stuff is so there we go this is a bit of fun i don't know um i'm not going to go and google a rocking chair but we can imagine that he's uh he's sitting in grandma's rocking chair well what big teeth you have <laughs> he wouldn't say what big teeth he's the one he's the one who's grid riding would say it to him there you go but uh but you got to be ridiculous and outrageous when you're um creating characters like this i'm not necessarily going to um going to take the drawing any further because it's just um i don't see myself really uh doing more with this um more with this but what i do like here is what i've done with the with the hair over here like this so um uh let's just check the health of the stream um okay so i'm gonna before we go on to the next phase i'm gonna visit the chat and see how how people are all enjoying the progression so far we started off with a quick little scribble we saw what we might want to do with the face uh and now we're thinking more uh about the personality and now i'm gonna try and tie this all together and make a uh a character of some sort out of it so let's go and have a look at uh the chat um ta -ta -ta. Sean Pascatuni, yes, I remember he was online. Um, Pre-recorded or no? No, this is live. I'm live, Kush King Vivo. There, not pre-recorded at all. Um, Roger Wade, how are you doing? Uh, Diruji, hi, This is this the Huntsman? No, um, I just guess I'm just, uh, it's the wolf. It's the big bad wolf. Um, his face shape totally fits that rounded diamond like a wolf's face fur. Al Pacino becomes a furry. Just Googled him. He does have a bushy face. Almost like a 90s character morph. Uh, hello, AMB family. Hey, Edge Deep, how are you doing? Um, Deruji looks awesome. Aaron AOX, Wolf Pacino. Lily Chan, how are you? Uh, Pixar injects a lot of stuff well maybe they do I, I guess i've just missed it it all looks the same uh pixar stuff to me i remember a th in a 3d vn maya episode they had to redo an entire because of one cd artist painted something inside a treat oh i get it you when you mean injects a lot of stuff i guess you're talking about the uh the, those things um okay um waiting for red i think we're testing the episode okay um he looks like a menace now are you coming to london already collecting some real papers to test out a zoo or a pub would be epic also what do you think of the purple and brown i'm not sure what you mean by purple and brown i'm already in london it's just i'm just extremely busy at the moment so right um let us now proceed on to uh the next phase which is i'm going to try and um turn this guy into a um let's just make that another color let's make that that color so i can work here 
um, and let's just move that off to the side because I want it to refer to it's not necessarily the best but it's something that I can refer to so now I'm gonna think uh, the one thing I know uh, is about the wolves is depending on what wolves you have I mean I don't know much about too much about them I guess life fantasy knows more about them than me is they've got they've got a lot longer legs I think than the average dog um, and I'm gonna go for that classic pose where the first front two legs are together and the back legs are kind of wide apart we can create a nice triangle like there if we want to keep the construction keep them in perspective and all that kind of thing if we want uh, so again I'm just working on a typical kind of canine silhouette here um, but you can see that I'm trying to to bring it all together in like this so I'm really you know I, I don't want that tail to come up like this I want it to be I want him to almost be like it almost looks like a bird there I want him to be you know swab even though he's shaggy and, and furry and whatever I want him to have uh, some air of he's not a he's not a muscle bound uh, kind of kind of guy so again what I'm doing here is I'm just throwing in some typical um, anatomical aspects of the of the animal that are so that so I'm just putting them in the silhouette face so it's not going to uh, interrupt my uh, drawing uh, when I want to focus on on making the head sit with the body nicely um, so now we've got uh, something like this hang on if I, I think I might have to uh, just leave my my stream for a second just bear with me a minute right my apologies sorry about that there was a disturbance and it had to be tended to right um so there you go this isn't pre-recorded at all <laughs> hopefully i haven't lost too many um uh audience members there um the, then the loss would all be both ways right so um i'm just gonna think about the head size now i'm gonna think about again see no drawing no drawing of features here I'm thinking purely about shape shape you know getting that that's a nice shape I'm kind of liking that you see this is all all again coming into the silhouette here like this you see I had a question in the last live stream where it was saying what about turnarounds and things like that again I hope I enlighten you at this phase you see when you're from the window from the outside looking in okay when you're from the outside looking in and you 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 can like you you you're looking at what professionals do okay and you're kind of like watching them making model sheets and all that and you think ooh I'm going to make a model sheet of my character you know so you see like the turnaround sheet here you know he's this many heads tall and this is the side view and this is the back view you know and you know whatever and then you think I'm gonna do that that's what I'm gonna do that'll make me a pro you see there's gonna be none of that for this kind of stuff until we've even done the storyboards or things like that we you know we need to play with these characters before we can work out their mechanics and their model and what works it's got to be a lot of pre-production development going on so hopefully you know um, uh, obviously this is all on the fly and it's just me coming live and making it all up on the spot so it's not going to be a true uh, professional experience you know it's gonna you, you can't do it that fast but hopefully you're gonna you know I'm gonna make you realize that you know your perceptions are perhaps putting slowing your progress down uh, sometimes when you when you don't actually know because of a lack of experience and your workflow and the the things that you're spending time concentrating on are not necessarily things that are going to help you 
produce as nice work as you could be doing if you spent some time thinking in uh thinking about you know things in you know in uh that that actually are more important than you know a character turnaround and that's the actual character of the character <laughs> that you're doing so i'm i'm gonna now the reason i've done this here is because obviously you know just a little bit you know we're not gonna go in too much you got the spine here now the pelvis goes this way okay and then the bones come off here and then this is where the stomach and and all that comes and rests in there then you got the latissimus dorsi on the back the trapezius coming around here the shoulders coming i know all this this is you know once you've studied a horse anatomy you know they've got their own sternocleidomastoid coming in here and you know uh i'm not sure if that would be called the sternohyoid or anything like that on a dog i really don't know so but anyway i digress so that's the reason i'm you you make these kind of nice appealing shapes it isn't just because you're just making up shapes you know um and this is again why real animator training exists okay because um the cutout crowd who are are in the industry they and character design base is always based on shapes made for their puppet rigs and they make all these very angular graphic characters which uh which move around and they learn all these shapes these shapes that they do are very naive okay they're not informed they're not ana anatomical so hopefully when you when you study uh and you start listening to more real animated training material you'll understand that this is not naive these shapes are actually shapes that are like for example what's happening with the with the arm here okay this and this okay what this represents is the is the scapula okay the humerus okay and the radius and ulna coming here and then the fingers come here and what happens is is you've got this extra um extra appendage on there on the carpal bones okay and then you've got the pad of the foot but then he's actually standing on his tiptoes like that on there's four paws down here and there's a little thumb up here okay and that's the way that works and then so if you're gonna cartoon on there you just work your way around it okay like this so it's all extremely important stuff not to be you know glossed over which is what i'm so even though i'm giving you this quick lecture i could have easily carried on drawing okay uh and not mentioned that but hopefully even though i have kind of glossed over it because there's just so much information to talk about when doing this because you're not only designing a character this is the character we're putting into the dog okay you're putting character into the dog right that's what we're that's what designing character is so you got to understand a lot of people approach character design with a completely again naive um ignorant again i'm not calling you names okay ignorant just means lack of knowledge okay misunderstanding that's all it is it's not stupid look in the dictionary a lot of people use the wrong words right so what they think is i'm designing a character so i'm going to make it on they th they immediately jump straight to the character aspect okay so they'll they'll go to a popular show that they that they that they um they like or something and they'll immediately start thinking about the character side of things and think oh character yes character personality most of the times they're not thinking character and personality they're thinking what they think looks cool okay there's nothing wrong with that if that's what they want to do but then it's it's, it's not a character design it's a cool design okay it's a cool design or it's a design based on something you think is cool okay so that's cool design right but what even cool design or character design what you're missing is is you're missing that to get to that level you have to have a given you have to understand the anatomy you have to understand what holds together the thing that you're trying to inject character or cool into okay because these things need to be injected into something and we're injecting it into a wolf okay we're injecting the personality into a wolf so we need to know a little bit about wolves beforehand you you understand it's it's very very important 
that you understand that. Um, because this is all fun to draw all these nice things, but if it's if we're not going to get um, if we're not really going to get the best message across if if we're not producing informed work. Okay, so now I'm going to think about maybe putting that little bit of coat around him to represent a some kind of uh, flamboyance to him. So I'm going to give him a little bit of a fur coat like that. I wonder if Amberly's online. I can't see her. Uh, is that Amberly? Yeah, there she is. I'm cur currently redesigning my Red Hood design. There she is. I made it. I'm in time. Hello. Ayane Agano. When I character design, I tend to think of personality and story first. And then in the story with other characters, I try to think of things, that is especially in the eyes. Yeah, well, silhouette is also extremely important, which is what I have to say. Um, okay. Right. So what's that about size chart? I guess I'm thinking, do you focus on each character at a time and redesign them how they... Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about size later today uh, after I've done this. Uh, after I've got the wolf to a stage where I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit happy with him, then I'm going to draw him in a pose and then I think I'm going to draw him uh, with uh, the Red Riding Hood character together uh, just to kind of get a feel for the two of them together. But again, uh, Edge Deep, you're jumping the gun. All of that stuff comes right towards the very end. You know, many times on the movies that I work on, the storyboard, we're changing the character size ratios all the time, you know. Um, right, so now I'm going to remember those shapes of the eyes. So I'm going to start drawing a little bit here. I'm going to remember the shapes of the eyes that we're going to put in there to keep some of that element of our original flavor in there that we were having. Okay, so and then I'm just going to have, okay, this big kind of thing here. Now this has got a scar on it and this one's going to be here like that so now this is a slightly up angle so the snout is going to be up i'm going to have it come in like this and out now let's keep it straight let's not have it come out he hasn't got a jutting chin we don't want to we're deviating enough okay i'm just trying to make something that i think works and looks nice okay so then this is going to come up here like this We've got the eye mask coming here and then the mandible will come here like this and then that'll help me on the other side. It'll come on the other side then it'll join together there. So I'm just giving myself some little anatomical maps. I'm going to give him that little headpiece, you know, uh, that gave him that uh, slight Pacino quality. but. Um, it's not really survived much, but uh, as I said, I'm just moving on with this, trying to get this as quickly as possible going on. I'm not going to have him smiling. I don't want to have him smiling. That's just his... Um, that's just we're going to leave that like that. Then we're going to have the ear come up here like this and down there like that. Let's have a look at that. Okay, not bad. I think as we've as I've tidied him up a bit, I am going to make his head a little bit bigger to sit on that rough body, just a little bit nicer. As I've got the that's nice, that's nice. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the silhouette. Okay, before I go filling it in, so I think I'm going to have something like this, and we're going to slant that down. Okay. And I'm going to work on, on this. I think I'm going to give him a bit of hair in there just to keep him alive. Okay, I'm going to, again, I'm going to make sure that this is working in silhouette before I start playing too much, right? Again, each time I'm, I'm now, once, once you make, I uh, make my initial shape pass, I'm able to um, refine those shapes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give him bigger, um, bigger feet, because um, I remember when I watched the film Bolto, 
I don't know if it's actually very true, because as I said, I don't know that much about wolves. I just know a little bit about canine anatomy. Okay, I remember them saying he had big wolf feet. <laughs> so, so I'm just making his feet a little bit bigger. So I don't know. Right, so this thing is coming. As I said, I'm, I'm really, just like when I did this, I just went for my typical knowledge of a girl's uh, anatomy body. I didn't really research uh, much. As I said, although I'm saying research, 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 uh, and I'm showing you research in the streams, in order to get these streams uh, kind of good and fast and flowing, I'm not doing much research as I'm drawing because it's just, you know, I think, you know, these are YouTube streams and the YouTube audience, you know, it's important to understand what your audience expects. This is not a real animator. There are some real animator training people in the audience, but it's important to balance it. So the material survives on YouTube right so this is um, kind of what I have here it's a little bit thin down here I'm gonna beef that up a bit that's kind of nicer there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just refine this face I think the body's looking kind of nice I'm just gonna come in here take out some of those construction lines and refine this face a little um, to see what, uh, just just to have some kind of image that I feel I can work with, because I think I'm getting somewhere with this. So we've got the the scar, and we got the eye here. I'm gonna put a little bit of a bag under his eye, like that, and I'm gonna give him that kind of square eye. So those diamond-shaped eyes, I'm gonna kind of keep. That's the only thing from the original sketch of of uh, Scarface that I did that I think I've really retained in this but um, you know it's uh, it's okay I'm kind of kind of liking the direction this thing's gone in uh, so this thing's gonna come here like this let's bring this we did have something of the mouth here like that I'm gonna I'm gonna make his mouth just a little bit smaller and I'm gonna bring in some eye mask around here let's tie that in with that there let's give him a little bit of a, a beard to bring that in there like that yeah, that would probably let's leave that actually that would be somewhat like that okay right we'll have a little bit of that on that side yeah that unifies that that might be a little bit too much actually if we look at the length of that, I'm liking the length for the silhouette of this. And then we have this on this side. Let's throw a little bit of fur in there like that. Okay, there we go. So, what we initially have is this, okay? Uh, I initially have something like this. So I'm gonna make. Uh, so I here's the here's the stage here's the stage the stages that we've gone through. Um, let's blacken this one. Okay. So our stages that we've gone through. Okay. So far to get to this uh, stage here, we have started with a quick scribble of Al Pacino. Um, I then tried to utilize some of that. To retain in some form of design uh, and then I tried to unify the style with the earlier character that we had um, from this into this okay uh, very quickly so these are all my first real attempts okay and then we're now uh, moved on and then we had a we, we just had a little scribble of him as if, if he would be seated in a chair okay like Scarface I just saw that on the YouTube and now I've uh, now I've gone and uh, done this very quickly what I think it needs just here is just a little kind of unifying shape here like that okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more drawing of him and then I'm gonna try and draw him and the red together because I feel that I want to explore uh, the wolf a lit in, in a little bit more before I move on 
we are only 54 minutes in so um, I think I'll do one more drawing of him and then I'll try and do another drawing of him with the Riding Hood character uh, just to see how they they sit together I might have her back to him because I want to get, have a, another go at his expression uh, another go at his expression because um, at the moment this is just a very standstill kind of thing so okay let's have a look um, well uh, edge deep you're gonna see uh, and I'm drawing I kind of know my shapes construction shapes will complement that because it's all in my style what I call the AMB style so so there you go um, uh, let's see what's going on. Hey, it's your girl. I just logged in with my animation account. Okay. Uh, yeah, wolves have big paws. They can walk in the snow better. That's also a lynx. Yeah, live fantasy knows their animals. Um, dun, dun, dun. Okay, yeah, I don't. I like uh, dull colors too. Um, I like dull colors too. See, Mango Box, you see. I see what you're saying. He looks like he would be the protagonist of the film rather than the villain. But you see, my kind of stories are, is, uh, why does he have to be a straight up villain like that? Why does he have to be, uh, you know, I want, I, I, I like to give some depth, depth to the, you know, depends what kind of story you're going to tell. Um, he may, it may be a Beauty and the Beast story that we're trying to tell. Because what I've tried to do here is I've tried to implement um, some man-like personality. So you see, what I've got in here is a, is a more typical kind of man-like quality and, and villainous quality. So now what I've done, and I've taken hair and I've given him a wolf, put him in his own environment. Um, he's, he's looking more like a just standard wolf shape. But uh, I'm trying to be a little bit more subtle here, even though, I, and, and again... I'm working with uh, I'm working immediately with what I've got like in the space of like I mean in the space of one hour we've come up with these various suggestions so um, so you need to bear that in mind you need to bear that in mind um, all right okay let's continue on with the uh, let's just put it that way right so now what we're doing here is I'm going to explore these shapes and then start thinking about the tendency that I want this guy to take. So I'm going to think about him making, as the person was pointing out, uh, jumping in before actually, you know, getting in there too early, you know. Um, I'm going to now think about him in a in a kind of pose that's maybe um a little bit more villainous a little bit more villainous so we're moving away from this uh this generic thing that is very very important as i said very very important you know perhaps too much dragon ball on the on the viewer's part you need to get to this stage before you start it's the character that makes real depth to the villain okay it's the personality um, why can't a villain be handsome uh, that's the whole point of this character so now I'm gonna start thinking about those things so let's let's start putting some menace into him in his own environment so again something that I'm thinking of is of a, of a pose here is a typical kind of walking pose okay so this I'm imagining to be a contact. So the reason I've made these shapes with the silhouette here is as I'm imagining this foot is going to be coming forward. Okay. And obviously this foot's going to be in the rear. And um, what's going to be the case here then is we're going to be in a case of passing position state um, on this on this foot around about here. So this foot's maybe going to be making a passing position out here. So these are typical kind of things that you want to think about putting into the silhouette, okay? Um, and again, I'm going to think about those uh, diamond triangular-like poses that uh, that are going to help the um, help the silhouette, okay? 
So now that's the pose. I'm kind of liking that pose. Let's kind of keep his ears up. And now we're going to start making him um, in a more kind of angry state of being. So let's have his eyes more, you know, frowning, scowling kind of thing. And we want to think about the expression. So again, I'm going to put the mouth in there and you're going to see I'm going to share with you some little construction tips where you're going to be able to, uh, again, pick some stuff up uh, that's going to help you uh, maybe draw animal faces from the front. So notice how I just put this kind of typical kind of mouth shape here like this. But now I'm going to move in with this square in the front here and I'm going to put another kind of square on there. This is going to kind of help me find the nose out. And then on the bottom here, I'm going to I'm going to slightly offset it. OK, to the side here like this, because I think it'll be nice. OK, um, I'm going to put another one here like this and that's going to kind of unify that. And that's how we're going to add some three dimension to that front view mouth over there like that. OK, so now we start doing this. OK, typical generic stuff. And now he looks evil. OK, but you see it is it's important that you have a face to work right. OK, so now we're going to carry on with with the evil face. OK, which we had to do this. I repeat, had to do this protagonist first in order to get something out of it so that we can play. And I'm going to remember the shapes. OK, so I'm going to build and build, get that triangle in there like that, which is over there like this. Right. And I'm going to sit this in here. all within the triangle. So now we're getting something a little bit more menacing. OK, and I think that would be a nice thing to have him if he could suddenly change from this to this. Okay? Right. Um, so this thing here uh, is the triangle coming around here like that. It's a good job. This isn't real animator training and it is free YouTube stuff because when I do the real animator training lectures, I don't involve the chat. <laughs> as you can see for obvious reasons right so now this thing is going to turn out here like this now i'm going to think about the mask there i'm going to leave this face uh, and i'm going to work on that later because i'm starting to fiddle okay so now i'm going to come in here and work on the on the body which is coming around here now here's i'm going to put throw in the anatomy features so then here is where the uh scapula is and the humerus arm okay coming here like this right and then the uh paw is coming forward here like this again we can splay those paws to put a little bit more venom into the character okay um like that and i'm going to bring that belly round there and then again, just really, really work these shapes. I'm really making sculpted shapes at the moment. Perhaps that arm is pushed a little too far back, but I kind of like it. I like the negative space of the triangle here. We really want to emphasize these qualities in there like that. Right. So this is going to come in and around here like this. Now... Um, what would happen here? This would be his 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 hip would be turned up on this side because it's supporting the weight here. And then we think about this. So now I'm starting to throw in some ana anatomy. OK, so you see we would have this here like this. OK, so this is all coming going to kind of kind of help me work these shapes out later. So notice how I'm kind of work in the shape out so i'm just keeping my pencil continuously moving okay uh, and then the boss position of this leg 
is going to be coming in here and I think I'm gonna have this kind of his throws kind of curling back on them like that there like this there and then the tail I'm gonna have kind of coming in through there so that's how I'm working that out that's a nice nice looking drawing and now I'm gonna start unifying that with uh, simpler lines okay right so let's get on and do that um, so now I'm going to begin with the angry eyes okay let's have one slightly more open than the other okay and then close this right and we've got the score happening there like this now I'm gonna keep these diamond eyes but I'm gonna kind of force his cheeks kind of into into it like this and obviously with his cheeks being involved it's gonna push his eye just a little bit upper like that now here's where the snout element is okay and the nose like this and now what we want to do is we want to add a little bit of snarling uh, kind of lines on there just to give him that extra quality okay because that's what happens when they clench their mouths okay and then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna think about this shape here like this okay we have this one coming around here like that right so then we're gonna have the teeth kind of in like this okay and then we're gonna they actually I don't know for sure but I, although they're called canines they have massive canines but I think the the teeth of the arrangement is not too dissimilar from humans I think they've got four incisors at the front so there we go we got something like that right so then this line is gonna come up here like this and then we're gonna bring that in and around there like that okay there we go now we're gonna have that diamond shape head at the top to give him that pointy quality and have his ear have this ear slightly going back a bit actually like that right and we're gonna open that out so there we go there's a that's already looking pretty menacing there right now I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna think about the silhouette because I've kind of got his face kind of to some kind of level that I'm kind of happy with I'm gonna put a little bit of fur there like that and I'm gonna have that lank have a slightly lank body what's that yeah going on there like that I'm gonna bring that in and under let's unify that with some fur on that side now I'm gonna keep that dead straight but then have some fur coming on this side so now I'm really working the shapes of these silhouettes this is where the silhouette shapes are really coming into play here so hopefully you can see how the science of shape simplification is coming into play and helping me really kind of define this kind of muscle muscle oh, well this would be up here actually and his arm is a little too thin but I don't want to get too carried away with that I'm just gonna have something like this okay with his thumb out there like that and this coming down here like this okay around here there we go that's already looking pretty decent to me I'm liking that we're getting somewhere with this okay this little exercise okay so if you're making a film if you've got to make a film quickly and you're at a professional level okay then you kind of maybe sometimes you can kind of see how sometimes a lot of sometimes a lot of films get knocked out pretty quickly and 
if you've got a, a really if you you know a lot of the budget would go into hiring an a, a, a proficient professional okay somebody who really knows their stuff such as myself um to get the ball rolling like this because if things aren't working okay some of you know that i was recently on a film okay before i came on that film the film was already one and a half years into production nothing was working on it i had to come and literally in within three months i was already redesigning all the characters and i had to be super super fast okay so some of that mentality that i, I was brought in as the story head of story and i was brought in to direct the animation when the animation begins never got to that stage to my knowledge they claim that they're still going to pick up on there even if they do i'm i'm not gonna uh, i'm done with it um but um so but it, they were taking their sweet time and the character designer did not deliver so i was literally uh also redesigning the characters of the movie okay and i was plonking them out like this so sometimes you know when things happen in a production you you need somebody of a proficient level to just come in and produce the goods and you know so you're kind of getting a, a little bit of a flavor of how that mentality works now looking at this so here we are now we've got a drawing of a wolf okay uh which is looking a little bit more um how shall we say menacing okay so um the evolution of the design as we speak okay we went from this to this to this okay this to this to this this could be a golgo 13 protagonist by the way getting back to that early early comment that that guy made this could be a pro you know that's why i picked this guy he didn't look essentially like your typical uh villain he he has villainousness about him but he's 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 not you know and that's what i've tried to retain into this wolf hair so then we we went through that stage and then we uh came on to this uh little play that we had with him sitting in a chair because that's a scenario but where we're trying to i just saw scarface in a chair so i said let's make him like scarface in a chair then we went down the more traditional uh generic route where just as we did with this girl okay just a, a, a disney-ish kind of dog okay to give me something to play with and unify all of this okay and now i've done that i can start thinking about injecting a bit of character and personality through these shapes that i've kind of learned so what i'm going to be doing next is i'm going to be um looking at uh thinking about how to um I'm going to draw a pose of him interacting with the girl. I'm just going to have the girl's back to him because I want another do another expression pose because I kind of like this expression pose how he's going to change because I'm glad that person talked about protagonist. I actually thank that person um in some ways because it gave me the opportunity because I kind of probably missed missed it because I'm working so fast what's going on in my head here. He's got to win over the heart of this little girl. It's not just going to be I uh, don't talk to strangers. He's got to be a friendly stranger at first. Um so I'm going to try and do a pose of him talking to the girl in a, you know, trying to befriend her or something like that. And uh we're going to do that next and then I think we're going to call the stream a day simple. Right, okay. Let us move on to the next uh part of the video which will be the uh two of them together so i'm going to create a new panel and i am going to draw the two together but i'm going to focus heavily on the wolf because i'm going to now think of him perhaps in a pose where he's going to be bending down i kind of see the wolf being really big next to the little kid like kind of like the uh the miyasaki film uh what is that princess mononoke even though the style that i'm doing here is 
completely different. So I kind of see him being being a little bit, uh, you know, maybe down, bending down, talking to the kid, being a little bit big. So maybe the kid's in front of him, hair like this, some somewhat hair, you know, and she's about yay high, his head height here, and he's bending down, talking to her. So maybe his arm is going to be out like this. And we're going to have this kind of thing coming here like that. Okay. So we got this, this kind of thing happening. Right. Here like this. Right. So then this, this would kind of be together. Again, I'm trying to think about the shape. I'm all the time trying to think about this triangle shape. Okay. Now, what I do want to kind of suggest, he's a little bit flat, he's a little bit square on, okay? I want to kind of have a little bit more dimension in his pose. So I'm going to bring this out here. And what I do want to kind of suggest is the, the head. So again, I'm really kind of thinking silhouette here. I'm going to think silhouette more than anatomy, okay? I'm going to get this kind of stuff down here like this. So we've got this like that. Right, so that's my first little shot, okay? Um, now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start playing a little bit more. And I'm going to start fiddling a little bit with the drawing. And then uh, we're I'm going to lead that on into the silhouette. So now I'm going to think more of like a, a more kind of him trying to be a friendly uh, with the girl but maybe a little bit devious in his expression. So maybe just kind of have him, his eye, you know, maybe so. Maybe he could be like, you know, wolves howl a lot, but maybe he could be saying ooh or something with a smile. I always like those kind of expressions. So I'm kind of thinking something like that. Okay. So we got kind of something there like that. And I'm going to bring that out there like that. Right. That's nice. I'm liking that. Let's bring the ears forward towards the girl like this. I'm kind of liking that. That's good. Okay. So then this is coming up and around here. That's nice. That's a little bit nicer. Okay. So then I'm going to have his neck coming in under here. And what I'm thinking is if this is front, maybe a little bit of the back, maybe maybe have a bit more perspective in the drawing, bring it a little bit back like that. Have this, have the foot a little bit more like this. Yeah, this is nice. So we have this kind of stuff together like that. Yep. So then this arm is going to come in. So I'm going to refer to the main model again because I had this one here. Now I'm going to refer to this one again just to get another get another little pose. See this this is all extremely important the the playing aspect of it. So this bone is going to come here like this. And then he's going to maybe have his thumb here like this. And then let's think a little bit about the finger position. Okay. Let's have these two fingers together like this and have something like that. So now I'm I'm still thinking silhouette, but I'm I've I've got to think about all these ver various um limbs, okay, that are going to be involved. Now the tail, I'm gonna put the tail behind to layer the drawing just a little bit like that. Okay. So now we've got something like this. Maybe the little kid will kind of be here in front of his line. Now her silhouette is quite simple, like something like that. So I'm kind of imagining something like this with the two of them together. Okay. So we can see the two of them uh, are together and how, how they're kind of going to be working together in a certain environment. But again, it's more about developing his 
character trait okay in in his poses and in his angles so i'm gonna go in there again now and i'm gonna build on top of this um let's build on top of it with let's try blue let's try using blue okay so let's go in and work these expressions and not not too much okay so i'm gonna come in and i'm gonna again have his eye kind of half closed okay and then we're gonna do it again on this one here like this okay now we're going to have just a little bit you know coming in here like that slightly raised okay not too much so we have something like that right so now the nose is going to be coming up okay because we've got this mouth shape and the nose is going to be coming above those little bit high a little bit high but i'm gonna stick with that i'm not necessarily gonna this isn't i'm gonna probably give it one more shot so the smile is gonna come here and i'm gonna keep this mouth shape like this here like that okay so this is gonna come here like this around through here and this is gonna obviously i'm gonna put this here but there's going to have to be some neck coming in the middle here right so i'm not spending i'm just trying to get the expression down okay again this this triangle diamond shape is what i'm trying to get here but i'm not spending too much time on it um I'm just trying to get the expression down. Okay. So there we've got this kind of expression of him talking. There's a little bit of a bigger snout. I'll tone that down. Maybe that can come into that portion there when we come in here. Okay. So we have this happening here. So now I'm going to have the back. Okay. Let's think about... This will be squashing and stretching, okay, through here like this, around here. And we'll probably have something like this with the arm. Okay, the arm's probably going to be just too far forward. We're going to have to probably move it a little bit here like this, okay. So again, the same principle comes. I'm going to have the front paw here, these two paws, and then the last one here like this to give us that feel. Just that his chest muscles will be coming there. That'll allow us to have a little bit of shag or whatever you want to call that on him. Okay, so then this arm is going to come here i need to think about how this works with the silhouette okay of those front paws so we have something like that okay coming around here like this okay now we have our our hind leg okay and I'm going to bring in some depth in there. I'm just trying to map out the silhouette. Okay. You see how, even though this isn't a planned shot, I'm leading the eye in. Okay. We ne may need to reframe it, but I'm leading the eye in to, to the point of conversation and really trying to work these negative shapes space into the composition between the two okay i think i might turn this one into a bitmap drawing for myself when i come off stream tidy it up it's, i'm getting a good vibe from it kind of like it okay so what i'm going to do 
is I can always redraw the girl. She's not important at the moment. It's the most important thing is this guy. I'm going to give him one more slightly. Um, I'm going to go in there and give him uh, one more uh, boss at his um, tidying him up a little bit. He looks kind of nice. It looks kind of nice and rough there. But I'm going to go in there and really try and bring out the expression now. Okay, so let me thin my brush and I'm going to come in here and we're going to talk about expressions. Okay, drawing expressions. So I'm going to keep the, the diamond shape of his eyes that we talked about. If you remember from here, we went from this and we tried to retain this diamond shape in, his, in every incarnation. We tried to retain that diamond shape in the eye. So now even when he's got his over eyelid, so this guy's eyelid, we kind of had this square going over a diamond like that, okay? Which is what we kind of, I didn't so much do it there. But um, so this, what we have, I'm, as his eyelids are kind of closed, I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to have this cheek kind of pressing and then go straight. So we want that. And then the wrinkle of the eye is going to come here like this. So that's how we're going to kind of really um, get some expression into the eye. Now, before I go doing the other eye, I do want to kind of get the nose sorted because it is going to kind of be in the way. So the nose is kind of like got the it's got this three dimensional quality to it. And on either side, we're just going to kind of do something like that. OK, now here we can do the same thing. This eye, because it's um, slightly more open because of the um, the other eyeball, eyebrow. So I'm just going to change that slightly. I was going with that. I'm going to slightly open that a bit more. So you can see, even though he's um, even though he's he's deviant, he's being friendly. There's there's something about the expression, okay that isn't necessarily so um nice in 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 a sense you know he's uh he's there, there's something uh sinister about it okay that's that's the feel that we want to get from it okay so then again here i'm gonna just go in here and get that upper lip maybe i might even put a little thing there that is kind of pushing it because the real thing would be like that but um maybe i will try it on just a little bit of the side there like that okay and then we're going to have the smile where this cheek is going to kind of come come up and over around there like that so this is how the theory of that works i'm going to cheat the side okay of this one just a little bit okay just to kind of unify it with that and now I'm going to make the open kind of mouth shape on this side. I'm going to, again, lose his teeth. Okay, his teeth would be here. We might even see one tooth. We could put one tooth. But I'm going to lose it because it, it takes away from the, um, the friendliness of the, of the, of the character uh, that he's trying to go for. Okay, and there is, you know, when I was uh, directing CG, okay, there is an option in some CG rigs to shrink teeth, okay? So this is something that we do in animation regardless of the medium, okay? You can go, you, you, you know, to push an expression. We can get, because a model, if this guy was a CG model, he would very likely have massive teeth, okay? So there would be an option in the rig to be able to shrink the teeth down. So this is not just exclusive to hand-drawn these kind of uh, expression traits. So I'm just going to put this ear fold in there like that. Okay, so there we go. There we've got some kind of uh, expression going on as he's bringing himself down to the kid's level to kind of talk to her about something like that. So then this is going to move in here like this okay like that there we go okay 
So hopefully you can see where we're going with this. I'm going to maybe put a little line here just because I like it. I like sometimes what I like, even in, if you look at a lot of Don Bluth and Milk Carl and whatever stuff, there might be some structural lines inserted into the character just to help the drawing a little bit. And I kind of like, I like those kind of things, you know. So then on here we're going to have, um, I might try this, but this is a stretch, so I don't think it's nice. You know, sometimes you see the scapula edge there, but we're, what, what we might have is a little bit here, but we're, we've got a stretch in the bone happening here. So this is super, super important stuff. To, uh, again, talking about anatomy, it's important to understand the way your uh, animals or your humans uh, bone anatomy squashes and stretches in order to get these kind of informed effects okay into your hair into your drawing with just a few lines okay so this thing is gonna be here then we're gonna have a little thumb here like this and then we're going to move out there like that right okay so there we have this and this one coming on this side there like that so again he's getting kind of uh, I'm kind of liking this drawing even more so than this one um, because we're now moving completely away from of course there are times he'll have to get hang angry but you can see now his uh, his his fur coat is actually progressing he's getting um, he's getting a bigger kind of almost like he's he's wearing a, a jacket kind of thing I kind of like it it's giving him a little bit of extra dimension okay so this is how you see I mean what's we've been going for one hour 40 minutes so we've got a cup had a couple of hours play okay and we're we're already uh, let's have a look at that and that kind of goes up doesn't it like that we're already getting some interesting kind of uh, stuff out of here so this is you know this is what a typical uh, you know how how I might actually although I said I've I've gone and I've uh, I've just rushed this out again when you're at the kind of level that I'm talking about and I'm training some of you to hopefully get to this level is um, is this is the way you work proficiently and you really need you got to understand that the director isn't necessarily particularly in this day and age the director isn't necessarily an artist okay or, or, or no nor is the producer so they will look at stuff and they will like certain things so you need to be quite informative in your drawing um, uh, so it's it's important to have a good starting point with the with with the basics i.e getting your structure and your pose of what he's like when he's just standing there but often they'll look at this drawing because that's the only drawing people focus on and they'll fuss about it so but if you put him in context and you start playing with this afterwards then they can see it in context of where it possibly might go so yeah we've we've, we've got something quite strong there i'm i'm, I'm liking that that's uh that's a that's a nice strong uh, drawing that that we're getting. So we're really starting to develop something out of this uh, pose. Now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put the girl next to uh, the character. So I'm going to kind of like just have her kind of standing here, okay? And we remember when we designed her, it was all about the silhouette, okay? Now this is a back view, so the back view I could very easily just, you know, you know, what I like about this drawing that I've done, I feel it really kind of symbolizes Little Red Riding Hood from the outset, okay? So I could very easily just do this, okay? Could very easily just do this, okay? And, and say, yeah, and then tidy that up and make that whatever. But as I'm teaching you stuff here, even the people who are probably um, let's just have a look let's see if there's any more hate um, I love your take of the wolf even more than the Red Riding Hood you had so much thank you um, AMB is not perfect nobody is but there's no one in the world that comes to mind when thinking about 
him it's honest to be the point of being blunt and plain speaking yeah keeping it real um i've never seen such passion in community even the scolding words that treat whoever gets it my pleasure um thank you the amb unchained your rank got me to actually laugh a bit uh yeah <laughs> yeah it's just one of those days thank you but it, yeah as i was just gonna come up there you know what i love to do is even the people who can't stand me they're gonna come back to my streams to watch me because i do stuff like this i just told you that i could just do this okay but i'm gonna draw the little girl from an anatomical point of view so you can understand i'm gonna teach you all a little bit about um human anatomy here so you can understand just how to get a back view like this as good as you can because that could be good okay but you know you're gonna get it as good as you can by putting in a little bit of anatomy so let's do that so i'm gonna have the i'm gonna rough in a pose well which is basically this pose here okay i'm gonna rough in this pose here okay and i'm gonna gonna kind of just do what i do now you're gonna see me make a few typical things here because this is typical of like the penny and the Anne marie of the 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 kind of animation films that i like of the the the, the don bluth and disney uh disney of the 60s era but i'm gonna i'm gonna show you the amount of skill okay because i could say you know you could just do this and this and then this and this you know and then i could talk to you and and then pretend that you've really learned something by saying just have this and separate this and this and then separate this you know and then bring these two out at the side and bring this straight down you know and then we'll have the head like this which will then i could i could do all this kind of thing and talk about structure so already i've given you a shitload of information but i'm going to show you um exactly how you know this works from an anatomical point of view okay because it's important it's important you understand how to draw a head from the back and it's important you know how to do it properly okay so we're going to have the back okay which is going to come something like this okay and obviously the reason being is that the middle line is going to be here okay so the trapezius comes here this is the cervical vertebrae it's going to then curl over into the thoracic vertebrae which actually curls around here like this and then the lumbar vertebrae comes out here like this okay and then what's going to happen is is the sacrum sits here here you got the iliac crests okay the iliac crests okay so this is the part of the pelvis that big wing bone okay and often almost looks like she's wearing a leotard okay because of that now again because all the weight is on this leg notice how it's it's tilting this way now this one's going to be tilting this way slightly so this scapula is going to be up here like this and this scapula is going to come straight like this okay it's going to come around and over there and then that's where this arm is going to be in here like this okay you see that comes through in here okay the rib cage is going to sit about here and the lumbar vertebrae is going to be here you're going to have those kind of false ribs coming down the side there okay um floating ribs okay then okay so then you have the the leg which has got all the weight coming on on, on this which is gonna the greater trochanter is gonna be on here like this so this is gonna curve this way with the patella okay and then the tibia is gonna come down here and the fibia fibula on this side so what actually happens is, is we're gonna come here like this okay i'm gonna have to be quite careful because it's a little kid and i don't want to get my channel flagged or whatever so but this thing is coming here like this round here okay so can you see how the anatomy works okay now this knee is coming forward and what's happening is the car it's bending and this is going to cause a raised effect with the foot off the ground so this is the calcaneus bone so the heel is going to come on this side okay and the padding of the foot's on the other side and we're going to come around here like that okay haters listen up did you get this in art school did you i doubt it right so then the other thing is this calcaneus bone is going to be on on the other side here okay 
So notice how this is a triangle here, but it's going to enable me to create the underside of the foot coming in on this way here, up here like this actually. So the underside of the foot is going to be a little triangle in there like that. So then this is going to come here like this, all in line with this. I'm going to hide this basket hand in here like this. So can you see how that's going to really help? Now here's where we got to work, figure out about the head, okay? So the cervical vertebra cut, now what you have to understand, mastoid process. Mastoid process sits here, mastoid process sits here of the skull. This is the occipital bone of the skull, okay? So then around here we got the parietal bones, okay? The parietal bones, the auditory ear canal is going to sit here, the mandible is going to sit here, the tempo, the the temporal arch is going to be here with the zygomatic bone. The frontal bone is going to sit there like that. Okay. So the other parietal bone is going to come at the side. Okay. This is going to be somewhat a little bit like this. Because I've zoomed in there, I, I don't like the ratio of which I put that. It's a cartoon character. Her head is a bit bulbous and big. So I'm going to bring it up and out like that. Okay. That was a little bit more too accurate. So, so can you see... By doing that, I've immediately kind of defined um, my character's pose and anatomy. And so because this character is wearing a cloak, so we, we understand, okay, so her hair would be like this, okay. So I'm giving you another lesson in construction, okay, that I perhaps didn't give you in this one hair, right. So her hair would be like this. Now, what you need to understand, the hair is going to come up and over, this is the middle section, but this is going to be behind the ear where the auditory ear canal was, okay, around uh, the, uh, near the mastoid process, right, and then around the back of hair, coming just off the occipital, we can make a diamond hair like this, and we can have that hairstyle that she had from hair, so you see, right? So then what we want to do um, next is we want to think about the dress, okay? Because she would have had a dress that comes over, okay? That then hangs off hair like this and then simply would just hang off hair like this. You see how it will come round hair and hang off hair like that. So hopefully you're really kind of like getting this, okay? You're getting how even though like this is a, this is just a simple back view. What goes into a good simple back view? You know, interesting. Let's just see. Let's see. So much knowledge you you have. Really awesome. Thank you, Christy. Um, I didn't even realize until I reread it. But good pep talk to those who actually do that kind of thing. I apologize for my previous. That was a self critique of how I tend to be too rigid. But I accidentally tend to make it sound. Um, I accept the apology, Ayani, and hey. I'm not too big enough to say I apologize. You know what? There's a perfect comment in here that, that is not a truer word said. AMB is not perfect. You don't need me or Lily Chan to say that. We all know that. So as you apologize, I humbly ask for your forgiveness too. Sometimes uh, as I'm in the moment when you're live and you're, you're doing things and something comes your way you sometimes i try to respond rather than react but the reptile in me they call it the reptile brain reacted so i do thoroughly apologize for that um it's not good it's an aspect of my character that i'm working on hopefully i'll get rid of it but i'm sorry that you had to experience that and um hopefully we can put it behind us. So um, thank you for your apology and please, please accept mine. Right. So now we're going to be going on to uh, the cloak. OK. So the cloak of the character. Oh, the shoes. OK. So the the shoes are going to be like this. OK. So again, remember around the calcaneus bone, we have this section here like this. OK, and then on this one, we're going to kind of I'm going to kind of push the heel, the angle of this pose. If we're on the floor, it's kind of up angle. So it's a kind of up angle. So we wouldn't really see 
that we wouldn't really see that we would see it. we would see it like that it's a shame i wanted to see the underside of the foot but it's a shame we would see it like that okay so anyway right so now let's talk about putting the cloak on this thing okay so let's get a let's get a let's turn her into a light blue and let's use my red because i that's my comfort color um is red so again it's you know we could just do this we could just make it up and many times animating i do make it up because of my experience so when i draw these silhouettes like this and that i do draw just a shape like that but again i'd be half assing it if i told you what doesn't go in on in my brain when i'm drawing okay so what goes on in my brain is as i know that the reason I make these this shape is as I'm tapering the shape of the the face so I'm coming into the shape here like this and I'm having the drapery kind of hanging off on either side there like that on either side it would hang off on either side and then it's kind of like coming around this and it's it's unifying around the head there like this okay so that's how I'm kind of getting that now the reason we get the hood here is uh, is then you know you've got to kind of imagine this kind of little shape but then i'm imagining it like a curl you know and coming to a point there like that and i'm gonna kind of put a little crease on there on there like that so hopefully you can see where i'm going with this so now the the cape okay maybe i put a little line there to stretch it the cape is gonna come and come off her arm there like this okay and then off her back so you see how i get this nice harmony to suggest the anatomy of what's going on under the cape then it's then what what's going to happen is is i'm going to kind of it's going to be hair like this and it's going to be hair like this but i'm going to kind of then it's going to have to come over and around like this okay so i'm gonna kind of have it come out from where the dress is and then out on this side so we wouldn't necessarily see it on there like that it's a little bit low i know that it should be that low really but i'm gonna bring it up a little bit i'm gonna bring it up so we can really see how the you know and then maybe you could put a line in there depends i'll have to delete the girl and see what what that that line looks like sometimes these lines these informative lines you know they can uh be too much and uh make the drawing fussy so one of the the art is what the a lot of art that goes into this stuff is to what to leave out okay what do we leave out right so this thing happens here like this right and this thing is going to come at the side here like this i'm gonna give her sh her shoes they're getting a little bit messy so as i delete the blue uh, and give it a nice one final uh, outline we're gonna see what that looks like so yeah so i'm gonna tidy those shoes up when i go over it with a black um pen okay so we kind of see that actually let's make it a little bit it's a little too small but i want it kind of like a miyasaki maybe i liked it kind of small i liked it kind of small i want it to have that kind of vibe let's bring her about there so just out of interest um okay i think that would be a nicer shot to have it like that okay so even from a shot point of view okay um uh, there's no background so i haven't planned this as a shot but if you're just talking just from a composition point of view you want to think about that but if i was making this i would go 16 by 9 okay uh, i think this little red riding hood's looking like it's more like a feature so i'd, I'd want to go wider get a nicer composition um so let's make that let's just let's just uh draw her in a little bit nicer to give her that um unify her with the wolf so we can see the kind of concept art working together and also uh this isn't just making the drawing nice this is so you can see the final thing of what it looks like um once the uh construction has gone because it is a very plain back view okay 
That's the important thing you need to understand. The reason I've gone to this detail um, to explain to you about this back view is, is the way you're going to get your back view. Look how simple the character is from back view. It is just virtually one big shape. Okay, so the way that you're going to get that back view to look like a nice drawing is to make it a nice drawing. And what that means is to make it an informed drawing. Okay, the drawing has to be informed. Now I'm going to make these shoes look nice by purely thinking about the silhouette. Okay, because if I get in there and start thinking about all the little details, I'm liable to get caught up. Okay. So if I just think about little things like silhouettes, I'm more likely to save myself a lot of playing and fussing. There we go. And then, of course, she's wearing socks. Okay, the, that would kind of come this way. I think that would actually be there like that. So tricky one that, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Okay, so you see... Um, I said you see and Siri just woke up no thank you all right so anyway you see how all this stuff makes a nice suggestive back view so now I'm gonna have a look what will happen if I do that nah, I don't know um, I think I think um, I think I'm gonna leave it out I think I'm gonna leave it out it's better plain so there we go now we have a a um a back view that is nicely informed that looks like there's something definitely under the the hood there so to speak so hopefully you can see the you know um it's been a nice two hour lecture hopefully you can see the uh the journey that we've we've had together on this uh this character design uh class uh, which was very different to the character design class where we talked purely about silhouette. The, both things are very important. Now, I did think about silhouette when doing the wolf as well, uh, but I didn't focus on it so much when talking to you because I've been doing that a lot lately and um, we covered it with this lesson with the girl and we saw her in her context there. So today we took uh, an image, of a very quick scribble of uh, of an actor uh, Al Pacino and we, I just tried to um, take the, the notable features that I had from that and uh, get familiar with them. Then I uh, imagined him in a scenario and, with, and to just play with those diamond triangle features. Then I pulled him back to what he actually is. So I was kind of jumping the gun, putting him in a chair and humanizing him. Said the thing is a wolf. Let's draw him as a wolf. So he looks like a wolf. Um, and then uh, after doing that, we decided, I decided to put him in a more expressive position. Uh, that was very menacing and evil. Uh, and then after doing that, we decided to put him in context with the girl character design uh, in a particular um, scenario. So, uh, uh, you know, walking in the woods one day, you know. Right, well, because in the original animatic that Amberly posted, I know that Amberly is doing her own thing. She designed, has, is designing her wolf hair, and uh, but when she started with her college course, she originally put this animatic up here, and I'm just using this as my, as my uh, blueprint, uh, the only little 30 seconds that she's done in hair. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Think about, in our next lecture, when we get round to it, I'm going to think about how we are starting to stage the... We've staged the characters a little bit, but not too much. But I'm going to step away from characters. We're going to stage environment. We're going to think about the environment. We're going to think about major locations and props. Um, we, did, we didn't really deal with the prop of her basket. Uh, we just drew it in there, but when I say props, there's a house or something in the... 
um, Amberly put a chicken foot house or something in there. That, so we're going to think about something like that, and um, and we're going to jump in and and look at that. Okay, so there we go. Um, that is what we've done in today's lecture. I have to say, um, I I do like this. I'm kind of happy with this drawing. Um, I I do like this drawing. I think it's nice. So that's what we did in today's. Um, lecture edge deep fantastic lecture storytelling laws of staging appeal solid drawing and not even animating yet well we're not even we're not we're, we're not focusing on animation on this stuff um, what Cintiq do I use Octavio says it all what I'm using I have two Cintiqs one in New Zealand and one in uh, UK the one I'm using at the moment is the Cintiq 12WX uh, so there you go. Thank you, Andres. Thank you so much. Thank you, Life Fantasy. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot. Been a lot of. Uh, <laughs> isn't that good? We were able to. We were able to go and uh, come and 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 have a have a little uh, bickering argument, and everybody, you know, we've all forgiven and forgotten. So that's good. Um, Forgiven, I mean, everybody else misinterpreted too. I know I, I did something wrong, but let's continue the anatomy separately for the back legs. Um, uh -uh. Dune, boom, storyboard, door, people talking about software. Um, I would like to see AMB's reaction to Violet Evergarden. And also get some tips from people who want to animate that much details. Well, let me just Google Violet Evergarden. Forgive me if there's a tone of cynicism in my voice. But when somebody says that much details, it probably doesn't really move. And if it does move, it's probably really fast movement. So they're getting away with a lot of stuff. Um, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Let me just Google. I've never heard of this thing. Um... But uh, it sounds like an anime thing to me. Um, anime animation is doesn't really move. Um, images, okay. Okay, uh, I can guess that there's going to be a lot of still drawings with flowing hair and glistening eyes. And uh, yeah, when there is movement, it'll be big, fast action stuff. You won't see slow, subtle stuff because they're not, it's, not, it's too detailed to move. It'll just take too much time. So um, let me just, I'll just YouTube it off screen. So let me just open YouTube and just see what it moves like. I can't bring it into the stream because I don't want my stream flag for copyright. Let me just mute my, uh, I'm going to mute my uh, computer. Uh, so I'll j you should still be hearing my mic. So if it makes any noise, it won't be picked up on the stream. Violet Evergarden. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the animation. Movie trailer. Beautiful design. Beautiful drawing. Lovely looking. But pretty crap animation. So that's one of the things that I hope uh, my channel does. Is it's to educate people. If your paradigm, your inner paradigm tells you that you love anime and anime is the best animation in the world doesn't matter who you're listening to you're not going to listen to them so you're not going to listen to me so i'm talking to the all of you i'm not just talking to the person who asked me that question what real animator training and my library does is, is it's going to open people who are trying to teach themselves animation online it's going to open your eyes as to what real animation is okay real animation um, and I, so for, I love the fact that I've opened a lot of people's eyes. It gives me a nice opportunity to talk about this group here. These guys, these guys are just too much sometimes. I was reading the comment of, of one of these people who've just joined the Real Animator Training Library. And I have to say, sometimes, I mean, you guys just, you're, you're too much. He says, uh, you sneaky son of a gun, just starting on the legs of my basic walk cycle, and guess what popped into my head when I saw the movement of the acetabulum, a, a ball following an arc, well played. And then Dwayne says, um, 
AMB's got more tricks up his sleeve. It's funny how silent he is about them. It clicked for me after the head turns and the cycles and I said, wait a minute, there's a reason it's in this order he laid out. Just watch the man, he's a trick. Exactly, he's hidden all those little gems and the only way to find them is to watch the videos in order. Basically, he's created his own Marvel Cinematic Universe called AMV Animation. He's good no matter what, you can't miss a beat. You ever notice how he throws in some helpful hints and blows? For me, it's the point where he where points out certain things. Uh, let's jump away from all this praise. Thank you, Duane. I love the praise. But um, he ninjas his way into your brain. That is almost a surprise when you realize the bouncing ball and pendulum theory for me is just everywhere. I hope it doesn't spoil it for you. What this basically says is, is that these guys, including Aaron AOX, who came to my training library, and I, some of you know I gave Aaron AOX that commission, and he's cleaning up my animation. He said it to me himself. He did a he did a a full on animation degree. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure he can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it might have cost him more than 80, 80 grand. Um, and he said to me himself that when he was cleaning my stuff up, he just didn't know the amount of detail and effort that goes into animation. Because people often confuse nice drawing nice drawing with animation okay now animation can have nice drawing but there's a reason the Disney Studios uh, stuff flows so nicely because they have worked out a way of drawing you know, which isn't too different from Picasso's cubism in some respects or Matisse's fauvism that enables it enables you to cheat dimension by changing shape okay curves against straights and this and that so when you are approaching it like the, a comic book artist because a lot of anime wants to look like the panels of their uh, manga books it's not gonna you're not gonna be able to move that stuff that way um, you can do it. It'll take an extremely long time, especially with all those layers of shading. So it may as well just do it in 3D if you want that 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 amount of 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 detail of all that kind of stuff. So that's where we're going with this. Um, so hopefully I'm going to open your eyes to that. So, um, but anyway, thanks for the question. Thanks for uh, introducing me to something. Um, Okay. Right, that was when the, we had the little back and forth. Uh, let's go towards there. Um, the chicken house thing will be ditched. It's worked fine for the 30 second, but I'm going to keep the chicken house thing. I like it. I'm going to keep the chicken house thing. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I, I like it. I like the weird. It has a weird Misaki uh, feel to it. Um, <laughs> Nata Rico, the next stream is whenever I can afford to do it. Um uh, so that's where my next stream is. My pleasure, Vietnam flashback. Um, Klim, how are you doing? Thank you. Um, my lunch is over. I have to go back. Um, you can hear the trailer. We can't hear anything. Uh, and ouch, I have headphones on. We're hearing the trailer. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to, maybe the stream, I'm going to have to delete the chat, this part of the chat with the trailer. I'm in the editor um, because obviously um, uh, I thought I had muted my sp thing, but it was there. Never mind. Um, I like anime, but you're right about its animation being subpar. When doing an animation jam, would you consider this early concept stage more important than... Absolutely. The early... Comp all of you, especially, like, I don't know if you're one of them, but anybody who loves anime, 
this this is the this is where the stuff happens the animation is virtually non-existent in anime so you know you need to have all these amazing designs and all these amazing you know pre-production is everything you know even a movie like beauty and the beast the animation moves along far quicker than the than the pre-production or any of that stuff yeah this is what i need to get into you people's minds uh this is filmmaking you know you know, when you're filmmaking, do you think the actors spend more time than the production designers? Okay? No. You know, the pre the pre-production stage goes on for ages. I've just come off for a movie, okay, that's been halted in production, you know, for the time being, where I came on a year and a half afterwards okay and they had just started to want to storyboard so i came on as head of story lead or lead story let's not you know well, i was turning into head of story because a couple of people were being fired when i came on because they simply couldn't cut it so and then not to mention so i come on as head of story i start doing storyboards okay so i change the complete process everybody gets excited oh shit this is this is starting to get good but then my story panels are full of so much life that the character designs are now being called into question so then the character designer has to has to be told to shift to another department production design okay um and art work with the art director okay who some of you might have met who's my friend so he wasn't designing characters. There's a there's a character designer and a production designer. He got told, he says, so then they fought around for a bit, look for some people to work on the characters because I need to be doing the board. They didn't have me in the budget to be doing design, but in the end, everybody just loved my story panels and the way I drew the characters in there. So it's like, can you? Can you give the CG modeler something to work with? Can you do a couple of poses of this character on this and that and this? So a year and a half in, it's almost like we start from bloody scratch again. Okay? So now I'm only on this thing for about three months. And then obviously, I mean, I can't, I don't know the reasons and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, probably not allowed to talk about it. But production gets halted for some reason. So, um, so you can see just how much time goes into all this, into the pre-planning, okay? Once all of this stuff is decided, animation is cacked out, even at a high level, cacked out, okay? You listen to Glenn Keane talking about Beauty and the Beast and how he only had this much time and he saved, he had to pick the scenes that he wanted to save to make really good time on, because the, you know, that's production pre-production okay pre-production is the plan and don bluth always used to say okay read it with me now failing to plan is planning to fail okay so it's extremely important that um you guys understand that that's why i'm doing this free youtube series for you all um and there's still stuff to do in real animator training like a muscle anatomy archive which is why i'm not doing a course on filmmaking yet um a course on filmmaking my i might have to do a completely different library not an animator training library. Real animator training library teaches you animation. It teaches you to be a real animator. Okay. Somebody once asked me, AMB, do you get, do you put people in the industry with your library? I said, fuck that, mate. You know what? I get industry people coming to me because once they've got over the fact that they're in the industry, they want to feel like a real animator. So they come to my library. Okay. So that's why I call it real animator training because it makes you good. It makes you think, now I'm a real animator. Now I can do it for real, okay? I understand it for real. Just because you're in the industry, it doesn't mean that you, you know, you got particular skills, 
or you're particularly good okay but this is just focusing on animation okay animation and there's drawing in there as well but drawing for animation in terms of anatomy and shapes anatomy and shapes okay we've got a couple of uh, nice character design plays and this and that but the main thing we focus on in real animator training is animation so if I was going to have to do something like this, you can't just bucket. This is a huge, this is so much bigger than animation. So that's why I'm working so fast and why I kind of lost my temper a bit with people complaining about, oh, he looks like a protagonist and, and this and that. Like, I'm just skimming through. Nobody designs a character in a, in, 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 in a day unless, unless the project is shit. Um... But I've just given you this in two hours, okay? So, and it's a viable character. So I'm just skimming through this using all of my professional experience to try and give you a glimpse at what goes on when you're working on a high-end production. There'll be a different department working on, on the girl. There'll be a different department working on the wolf, you know? Maybe you have two, three character designers, depending on the budget. You know, different artists drawing different things. And then it goes to Glenn Keane as the supervising animator who will then try and unify them all and, and whatever. So this is, you know, it's, it's hopefully got a lot of information in here, but it's just giving you a little glimpse. I'm not pretending to you that this is somehow some course that you're watching, you know, because this is a lot of this is you're just watching me burn through this stuff to get a nice looking result to show you how it works. So hopefully that um, that's given you a little insight. <laughs> yes, yes, Pedro, uh, Red Fox, absolutely. Um, what typically has happened to a movie behind the scenes when they have more than four writers credit on the film? You know what? I honestly don't know. But with the Tales of Despro, we had um, we didn't have just four writers. We had uh, we had Henry Selick directing it. Henry Se Henry Selick, Nightmare Before Christmas guy. Then he was he was booted out. I think I, I shouldn't use that word. I can't. You know, he left. Okay. And then there was um, the the French guy Sylvain who did that bicycle overrated overrated bicycle film Belleville something or the other you know then they had him then you had uh, then you brought in Sam Fell okay and he had Rob Stephen Hagen as his partner director on there so the two of them um, Rob Stephen Hagen but here's the thing so these guys are four directors so Again, just like I was telling you with what was going on with the film when I was involved. I came on Despero. I worked on Despero for a year. But there were people who were working on Despero for one year before me. Who were working on it with this. And then a year before or half a year before when all this stuff happened. Okay. And then it took me a year in pre-production, a storyboard. And then it was still going on in animation for about half a year afterwards. You know. So... Similarly, like the film where I told you where, where I, I went on, it was a year and a half beforehand. Then I come on, and then, you know, it's about three, maybe three, four months, I guess. So then, almost two years, and now they might start up again. And he keeps telling me, I keep getting emails, this is happening, that's happening. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't care. Um, I'm done with it. But like, so, so... It may well start up again and these things these things take a lot of time because they're you know the the investors aren't happy the producers aren't happy they want to see this they want to see that such and such needs to get their money such and such needs to to do whatever so there could be a number of reasons life fantasy uh what happens when there's four writers involved in a film sometimes you get a a, a person to edit the script and they get a they say they want a writing credit because they're a big name okay um on despro gary ross the producer i think he 
He did that movie with Tom Hanks Big, but I think I also read his name in The Hunger Games. I only watched one of them because my wife wanted to see it. I can't stand the look of those movies. But Gary Ross, um, he was the producer, but apparently he was making this to please his wife. She wanted to make an animated film. So then he would come in and he would not be happy about this and he would insist that we did all the drawings with pencil because he liked shaded pencil. Okay? So all the drawings had to be scanned and whatever and he didn't like anybody using marker pen or, or, or doing drawings like this. Everything had to be shaded pencil with putty eraser to create lighting so he could visualize it in the animatic. You know? So, and then he would rewrite things and change things and he's the producer. So this is the way um, all of this stuff happens um, in the industry. Uh, so I honestly don't know what's, what's going on uh, when there's four writers involved. So hopefully that gives you some insight. Um, I've spent three months on one large prop. No joke, it was transforming hot air balloon, but still takes a lot of time. Absolutely. See, Sean, Sean's a man, the man in a man in the industry. He knows. Um, absolutely. There we go. So um, that was it. I think we had a good stream. Um, I really enjoyed it. There was a little bit of back and forth going on on there. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, if it's staying on YouTube, I might have to do an edit of this stream because it had um, it had uh, it had some sound in there that didn't YouTube. The one good thing about YouTube is it's got an editor in there now. So it had some sound in there that I don't think I'll be allowed to play. I thought I canceled out the sound of the trailer, um, but um, I might have to edit that out. I might edit out all the some of the unpleasantry as well because it's just not necessary. Uh, it might break the flow of the an otherwise entertaining uh, lecture, or I might leave it in. We'll see. We'll see. Because um, I, I I'd like to leave the stream up. I don't want it being taken down. I also know that people can uh, now YouTube has to be more careful if anybody reports anything. Um, so. Uh, it could result in the stream being taken down. I don't want the stream to be taken down. I think there's a lot of good information in here. I want to leave it for free on YouTube. So, uh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. I'll definitely edit out. I'll probably have to edit out the trailer noise. Don't delete the part. Make, mute it and replace your audio comments. You know what, Lily Chan, I understand that. I understand that, but it takes time to write my audio comments. Um, I just don't have that kind of time. I've got, I've given a lot of time already, and it's just, I, I, you know, I, I can't. I don't really have the time to sit down and type a transcript of, of what I said. So uh, it's just best to chop that out. It's just an opinion on an anime. The person asked my opinion, and they got it. Um, we would even have the chance to better understand what you told us since we would actually read it. Ah, it's just an opinion on, on, on a trailer. It's not really, it, there's nothing to really be learned from that, you know. Um, my opinion is as good as anybody else's when it comes to watching a trailer. Uh, Art Nature, love the lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Okay, I'm going to end the stream now and I will see you all some other time. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.